We've got everything working here, but it would be great if we had some way to sort these cards. So right now they're just being displayed based on the order that they take within the array that we have set up for them. But it would be great if we could sort them maybe based on their price, so from low price to high price, or maybe the type of property they are. And for that, what we can do is make use of an Angular pipe, and we can provide some kind of user interface here to do the sorting. So if you're coming from Angular 1, you might remember something called filters. So a filter is something you would apply to your repeater, and you could do something like the order by filter. So you place the pipe character, and then you call the filter that you want. So in Angular 1, there was an order by filter. And as an argument to this, you could pass the key that you wanted to order by. And in our cribs data, we know that we've got a key called price. So we could use this price key to order this data in an ascending fashion. So if we wanted to go from low to high, we could pass price like this. Or if we wanted to go from high to low, we could just negate it. We could put the minus sign in front of the property. Now Angular 2 has a similar concept, but it's not called a filter anymore. Instead, it's called a pipe. And that kind of goes along a little bit better with the fact that we're transforming our data. So we're taking our raw data and we're making some transformation on it. And it also works well with the fact that we're using the pipe character here. Something that we have to note though is that Angular 2 doesn't come with its own order by pipe. We'd actually have to implement this ourselves. And in fact, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create a custom pipe. So let's just remove this for now and we'll implement it later. So the first thing here is I'm actually going to wrap this all in a row. So I'm going to create a div with a class of row, and let's just place all of our existing HTML within that row. All right, so just above this, I'm going to paste in some HTML for the sort area. All right, so what we've got here is a bootstrap panel, and in the body of the panel, we've got a select element, and this is the element that's going to be populated with option values. So much like we did in the previous video, we're going to have an array of sort fields, and then we're going to take a field from that and bind it to the value property of the current option element that we're on. And we're also going to display it. Here we're using this util service, which we've yet to implement, but we will do that in just a second, and we're calling the capitalize method from it. And basically this method is just going to take a field name and it's going to capitalize the first letter. So we'll see that in a second. For now, let's just make sure that this is coming through. All right, cool, so here is our sort by area. Right now we're not getting anything coming in the select list, and that's because we've got to go and put that in place. So let's go do that now. We'll go to our component class, and here let's create a member that will be an array, and it's going to be called sort fields. And the elements within this array, they're going to be strings. So here we'll want address, and we'll want area. We're also going to need bathrooms and bedrooms. And then we'll need price, and we'll want the type as well. All right, so we've got our sort fields, but we've got to put in that util service and put a capitalized method on it before these will be shown on the screen. So let's go over to the terminal, and let's just stop the app from being served. And what we'll do is put a new service into our services directory. So let's change directories into source app services, and here we'll generate a new service. So we'll do ng generate, and we want a service, and it's going to be called util. Now, like we saw before with the crib service, we get it generated, but it's not provided. So the first thing we'll do is go to our app module down here, and we'll pull in the util service, and we'll place it within our providers. So down here, let's say import util service, and it comes from the services directory and util.service. All right, so now we've got it coming in, so let's put it in our providers array. All right, so let's open up the service and put in that capitalize method. So down here, let's say we'll have a method called capitalize, and that's going to take in a word as an argument, and the return type here is going to be string. And what we want to return here is, first of all, the very first letter of the word, we want to capitalize it. So for that, we can use word, and we'll call character at. And we want to get the character at the very first position, which is going to be position zero. So that's going to be the very first letter of the word. And we want to uppercase it. So we'll say to uppercase. 
Now that's going to give us the first letter, but we still have to add the rest of the word as well. So for that, let's just do a substring, take everything from the second letter onwards, and we'll concatenate it to the first letter. So let's concatenate the word, and we'll do a substring, and we'll take everything from the second letter onward. Okay, so we've got this done. Let's now go to our class for our crib listing components, and we need to inject the util service. So let's copy this, and this will save us just a little bit of time. We'll call this util service. And over here, it's going to be util service. And then down in our constructor, let's inject it. So much like we did here with crib service, we'll inject util service. All right, cool. So we'll save that and let's just double check our template and make sure everything's good. So we're doing let field of sort fields and that's taking from here. And I just noticed actually we have to put sort fields with an S at the end. All right, so let's save this and check it out. So now if we choose a sort field, there we go. We've got our select list populated. So even though we've got a list here, it's not doing anything yet. And that's because we have to put a pipe in place to actually do the sorting. So why don't we go do that? Let's go to the command line and we'll stop the app and let's go back up one level. And this is where we want to create a new directory called pipes. So we'll do an mkdir to make a directory and we'll call it pipes. Now here within the pipes directory, if we change into it, this is where we can generate a new pipe. So we'll do ng generate and we want a pipe and it's going to be called sort by. All right, so let's check it out over in the editor and here within the pipes directory, we've got our sort by pipe. So right away, we can notice a few things. We are using the pipe decorator, which comes from Angular core and we give it a name. And in this case, it's sort by. So this pipe decorator is marking this class, this sort by pipe class as an Angular pipe. And that means that it's attaching some metadata to it so that it can do the things that pipes need to do. And when we create custom pipes, we have to have the class implement pipe transform. And pipe transform essentially says that there needs to be a transform method within the pipe. And this is the method that's going to be responsible for doing whatever the pipe is supposed to do. So in our case, the pipe is meant to sort values and the logic for doing that sorting is going to be here within the transform method. All right, so let's set up a few things here on the transform method. We are going to be getting an array. That's going to be the data that's fed into this pipe. So we can say that's going to be an array and we'll give it a type of array. And within there, we're going to have strings. Now, the first thing we should do is let's check to see that we have an array. So we don't want this transform to run if we don't have any data being fed into it. So we'll say if we get an array, this is the transformation that we can have happen. Now we're going to need some arguments, which is the second parameter here. We've got args. This question mark here denotes it as saying that the arguments are optional, but we're going to get some arguments when we use the pipe. And one of the arguments is going to be the sort field. And what we can say is that that sort field is going to be our arguments that are passed in at the very first position. So we'll see how this plays out when we actually use the pipe, but we're going to have an argument at position zero, and that's going to be our sort field. So now to actually do the sorting, let's use the sort method. So we've got our array that's being passed in up here. We want to use the sort method on it. So we'll say sort, and instead of just leaving it up to the sort method to figure out any sorting, what we want to do is pass a compare function. So a compare function in the sort method takes two parameters, A and B, and we can just type in those as any. And these are going to represent two elements that are in the array. So as we go over the array, we're going to compare one element to the next, and that's how we're going to figure out which should come first. And that's going to be based on some condition. So let's set up that condition. So the compare function here in our sort method has to return one of three numbers. So we can either return one, and that's going to say that A is greater than B, or we can return minus one, saying that A is less than B, or if we return zero, then that means they are equal. So let's set up those conditions. So let's say that if A at our sort field, so we're taking A, which is going to be some element in the array, and we want to find the sort field that we're passing in, so it could be the address or the price, we want to find out if that is less than the same thing, but from the next element, so B at sort field. So if this is the case, let's return minus one. Now let's just take care of the opposite. 
If we get A at the sort field being greater than B at the sort field, then we're going to want to do the opposite. So A at sort field, if that is greater than B at sort field, then let's return one. And if neither of those are the case, then we'll say they're equal, and for that we'll return zero. All right, so the array is being sorted, and now we have to return it. So we'll just return the array after we've done the sorting. Okay, so let's make sure that the pipe here is included within our app module. So down here, our app module needs to have the pipe be included in the declarations. And because we're using the Angular CLI, that happened automatically for us. It got brought in and added to our declarations. Okay, so now let's actually make use of this here within our crib listing HTML. So down here, this is where we're going to use it. We're going to say that we want to use the sort by pipe and we're going to pass an argument in. And that's what we saw as we were implementing the pipe. And the thing that we want to pass in is the sort field. And we have access to the sort field here because we've done a two-way binding with ng model up here. So anytime that we want to do a two-way binding, if we want to bind some input field to some value, then we can use ng model. We place it within the parentheses, and then we place that within the square brackets. And that's going to set up a two-way binding. So this now allows us to take the sort field that we select, which is bound to the value. So because this sort field is bound to our select list, and within that select list, we have options with a value that are bound to them. This sort field is going to give us whichever option we've picked, and that can be passed here to our pipe argument. All right, so let's save this and let's start the application up again. So we'll do ng serve. And now let's take a look. Okay, so now if we choose an option from our select list here, we'll choose price. There we go, we've got our cards being rearranged. So we've got the lowest price here being 210 and the highest price being 755. Now this is a good start, but what if we wanted to order them from highest to lowest instead? Really what we would want at that point is some kind of control so that we could say order them in an ascending fashion or a descending fashion. So basically we want some kind of toggle so that we can change the order of the sorting. So why don't we put that in place? We'll need some UI elements, some buttons here, and we'll also need to amend the pipe transform method that we have. So just after this column small four div, I'm going to paste in another one, and this has some more controls. So as we can see here, this area is going to be for changing the direction of our sorting. And we've got two controls here. We've got two buttons, and this one is to sort them in an ascending fashion, and this one is to sort them in a descending fashion. Now what we're doing here is we're binding a click event to these buttons, and that click event is going to set the sort direction. So we're going to have some sort direction property. It's going to set it to either ascending or descending. The other thing you'll notice here is that we're using ng class, so that's a directive that comes from Angular, and it gives us a way to conditionally apply various classes. And this is going to let us give the user some feedback about which direction the items are being sorted in. So if the sort direction equals ascending, like it does if we click this button, then basically we're going to toggle on this button success class and this class is going to make the button green. And we're doing the same thing down here. If the sort direction equals descending, then we're going to have the button success class be applied to this button. All right, so we need this sort direction property to be here within our component class. So let's initialize it, and let's initialize it to ascending. So it's going to be a string, and we'll say that the default here is going to be ascending. So we'll just put ASC as the default. And why don't we also put in a default sort field? So let's default our sort field, which is a string. Let's default it to price. All right, so now let's modify our pipe. So down here in our pipe, essentially what we have to do is put in some way to modify what's being returned. And basically it's going to be binary. It's either going to be ascending or descending. And because the sort compare function works with values like minus one and one, what we can do is just provide some kind of modifier for these. So let's see how that looks. Up here, let's grab the sort direction argument that we're going to be passing in after we've implemented this. So we'll say that we have a variable called sort direction, and that's going to be the arguments that are passed in at the second element. Sort field is the first element that's going to be in our arguments, so that's at zero, and then the sort direction is going to be at one. 
And then we'll want to start with some kind of modifier. So let's say that we're going to have a modifier variable, and that's going to be equal to one. And essentially here, we want to change up this modifier if the sort direction equals descending. So the modifier here equals one because we're going to apply it down here to our returned values. So down here, we're going to say, let's multiply this by the modifier. And we'll do a similar thing down here. So as it stands, this isn't going to do anything to change the behavior of the pipe right now, because if we return one and we multiply it by the modifier, which equals one, then we're just going to get one. And the same thing goes up here. If we multiply minus one by one, we're just going to get minus one. Where it will change, however, is if we go like this. If we say that if the sort direction equals descending, then we want to change the modifier to be minus one. So in this case, modifier should equal minus one. And now what's going to happen is it's going to flip these values. So minus one becomes one and one becomes minus one. And this is going to allow us to toggle between ascending and descending. All right, so now let's apply this to the pipe over in the component. Let's pass this in as an argument. So we've got our sort field being passed in already. Now let's pass in our sort direction. Remember that this sort direction here is showing up initially as ascending. So ascending is going to initially be passed in as the second argument to the pipe, the sort direction argument. But this property is controlled by the click events that we have on these buttons. So if we click the descending button, then it's going to be set to descending and that's going to change the sorting. So we're sorting by price, that's the default that we set up. So if we click descending, now we're getting the highest price first and everything else comes after. And we can try the same thing with another one of the properties. Let's say maybe the area of the home. We can choose ascending in this case and that's going to change up the order. So once again, this modification that's happening when we toggle between ascending and descending is happening here within our pipe. So because the array sort compare method is only returning either minus one, one, or zero, it's really easy to modify it just based on some kind of modifier like we're doing here. So if the sort direction equals descending, we flip it so that everything should be reversed. Minus one becomes one and one becomes minus one and that flips all the sorting. All right, so it looks like everything is now implemented. We've got this area to add new listings in and we can sort them. And of course, we're reading in the existing listings that we have in our data. In the next video, we'll wrap up and talk about where to go from here.